I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie, and this is The Cool Part Show, our show all about innovative, unusual, unique, and protective 3D printed parts. You might notice there's something a little bit different about our wardrobe this episode, but don't look at the helmets, look at the padding. The padding isn't foam. These are 3D printed lattice structures providing the protection. 3D printed structures tailored to the different needs of these different helmets and tailored to our heads. We're talking about digital materials on this episode of The Cool Part Show. The Cool Parts Show is brought to you by Carpenter Additive. When it comes to managing metal powder, there is no one-size-fits-all approach. Stick around after the episode to learn more. Welcome to The Cool Parts Show. Thanks for joining us. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you get notified about our new episodes. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about the 3D printed pads inside of these helmets. Right. We're going to talk about 3D printed padding, and there's a lot to talk about. But first, we are launching something new, starting with this episode. Something new for fans of the show. We're going to tell you about it. Stick around to the end of the episode. So, 3D printed padding. Where should we start? As we said in the cold open, the helmets are not the point. The padding is the point. The pads in these helmets are made from 3D printed lattices. This is 3D printing as a replacement for foam, and it's an example of something called a digital material. So the helmets are standard, they're off the shelf, but the padding is customized. Um, the, the structure of these lattices is engineered for the needs of the helmet, engineered for the wearer, and it's all the work of a company that knows a lot about 3D printed lattices. They're called General Lattice and they're headquartered in Chicago. And they started out as a contract manufacturer but found they were spending so much time helping customers design their parts that they wanted to just lean into that. So now they're more of a design, more of a software company specializing in these digital materials. Digital materials. Let's talk about that. That's what's kind of radical here. We are accustomed to something like the, the softness, the, the springiness of padding coming from foam. But here it comes instead from the design, the way that these 3D printed structures are engineered. Let's hear more about that. Here are Merrick Moffitt and Nick Florick, the CTO and CEO of General Lattice. General Lattice has been a number of things over the years. We started off as a contract manufacturer and uh, really what we've evolved into today is a digital materials company. And so uh, when we talk about digital materials, we're talking about using geometry paired with existing uh, commercially available hardware and materials to start to alter and change the mechanical response of those 3D printed materials through the use of geometry. The idea that you can actually change the mechanical property of a base material just by changing the shape or geometry is what a digital material is. So when we're talking about digital materials, we are not talking about like a solid block of metal or some resin or even like a 3D printing filament. We're talking about materials that are getting some of their properties from their chemistry and some from their geometry. So when we visited General Lattice for this episode, uh, we walked in and they weren't formulating new materials, they weren't making powders or anything like that. Instead, as a digital materials company, they're really zeroed in and focused on figuring out the geometries that are going to deliver the right material properties for specific applications. Figuring out the geometry. That's right. That's, that is what's so radical about this. That phrase, digital materials, is useful because it captures this way that we're accustomed to thinking about materials being one thing and the geometric design being something altogether different. And the materials have material properties, like the, the softness or springiness of foam for padding is a material property. Here is something altogether different different, that same property achieved instead through uh, the design of the structure, the design of the form, the digital design used to achieve a property we otherwise associate with the material. And there are lots of potential applications for this concept. Foam replacement just happens to be a really good use case. Digital materials are a great replacement for traditional foam applications, especially in helmet applications, uh, because of three real, real main benefits. One being uh, biometric customizability, so the pad being able to actually fit your head. Um, that's a really great benefit because even if your pad meets the mechanical properties uh, that it needs to, if it's not touching your head all the way around, you're not going to get the results you need. So that paired with true mechanical property that's 
necessary for not even the whole pad structure, but a specific place. Uh, coupling that with biometric data is uh, a real, real uh, mechanical property benefit overall. And then finally, just the sort of ergonomic breathability of the pads in general. Uh, we have a lot of great feedback in terms of reusability, breathability, and, and cleanability. So 3D printing as a way of applying this digital material concept, it gives you the design freedom that you need to really easily manipulate your material properties and get the material to do the things that you need it to do. Um, but 3D printing also makes it a lot easier to customize whatever it is that you might happen to be making. And we got some firsthand experience with that for this project. Nick talked about personalization. The, the padding in these helmets was personalized to us. So first step, we got our heads scanned. Yeah, thank you to Exact Metrology here in Cincinnati. They scanned both our heads and the interior of the helmets with the off-the-shelf pads removed. Uh, they needed to do both so that General Lattice would have an idea of their sort of design envelope, how much volume they have to fill with these pads. Yeah, this is literal personalization because that design envelope was the space between the inside of the helmet and the outside of our skulls. So once we re received the scan data from the helmets and of your guys' heads, um, we took it into Rhino Grasshopper 3D and basically ran through a custom script that we've written that allows us to uh, reference our Frontier database and take those material IDs and populate the pads with the appropriate data that we need and ultimately print them. So the process was get the scan data, set up some pad design spaces, find the appropriate materials that we want to put in those design spaces, and ultimately integrate those. So customizing the pads to fit between our heads and the helmets was a big part of the tailoring that happened here, but these pads are also tailored for two different applications, for two different sports that are represented here. So in the race helmet, these impacts are designed for a one large impact that you know you need to survive one time, not repeated over and over again, smaller sort of impacts. And so um, with the data we collected, we were able to find a structure that met those criteria, and we're able to implement that within the shape that, okay, this is a race helmet where it's looking for one one big impact that needs to protect its wear, where uh, a baseball helmet will, will take more repeated and over and over again impacts where we went through our data and found the appropriate uh, unit cell or lattice to actually go and put within the design space. And so between those two lattices, the densities change quite differently. There's thickness differences as well, along, as, well as weight. Um, what we're able to do uh, is dynamically tune the mechanical response of the digital material independent of the application. And so that enables us to, again, be very specific in terms of how we're leveraging the digital material for each application set. So photocentric 3D printed these pads, General Lattice glued them into the helmets and shipped them to us. Photocentric 3D printed the padding through Digital Light Processing, DLP, with a, a flexible polymer. We should say also, General Lattice has developed lattices for other 3D printing processes too. Here's selective laser sintering, multi-jet fusion. General Lattice doesn't do any of the 3D printing themselves, and that fact kind of points to what their role is in the process. Merrick mentioned Frontier. That is their name for General Lattice's database of the different lattice structures that they have developed through engineering, through testing. And so they bring all of this intel about different lattice forms, the ways that they can be tuned, the different resiliency, springiness, properties they achieved when they're used through various different 3D printing processes. So Frontier is a digital material library that is free and want everyone to use. Um, and the idea is that it's designed to drop the bar of lattice structure adoption. So currently how that works is that a design engineer will have to go and learn or purchase a new piece of software uh, that they, again, have to spend a quite a bit of time getting comfortable with to ultimately generate a handful of swatches or samples that they have to go and then get printed, then get 
validated, physically test, or potentially even digitally analyze. But that process is extremely painful. It's expensive. So the goal of uh, Frontier is to lower that bar for everyone. In, instead of going to do your own research and own creation of these materials, can we get ahead of that and say, OK, don't go do all of this research that we've already done. If you can just search for a mechanical property that you know, that are looking for, let us get you there a lot, lot quicker. And so ultimately, uh, the database will not only show a design engineer that these properties exist, but ultimately will have a way to integrate that material into their part. So anyone can search Frontier for a digital material for their specific application. But General Lattice is also taking this a little bit further and developing some really specific digital materials for even more targeted types of applications. So the foam that is inside of both of these helmets, even though it's been tuned differently, it's all one product called Foam X. So Foam X is a what we would call pro material, um, so a pro version of a digital material. Um, the idea is that these pro materials are developed further, have gone through additional testing and evaluation that's very specific to an application. And so the idea is to create a technology where any helmet company can license uh, Foamax from General Lattice um, and have it seamlessly integrated into their existing helmet designs. They don't have to go around and retool the helmet just to adopt this new padding, but they can actually bring that padding into the existing design space and, and increase the uh, safety and performance of the helmet um, within a very short time span. And again, what this does is help eliminate all of the R&D work that they would have to go out and do themselves, where we can again bring this to market in a way that's akin to like a Gore-Tex technology where many companies can license that and, and use it within their product. So yeah, Foamex is their product, a foam replacement, and, and tunable for different foam needs. Our different helmets have different needs. So my racing helmet needs to protect against collisions, and your batting helmet needs to protect against stray pitches. But there are other applications General Lattice sees for, for this idea. Yeah, so outside of head protection, um, we're very interested in the footwear space as well as specialty packaging. Um, so when you look at you know, hard shell cases that are transporting high dollar assets, um, I think there's a real opportunity to replace foam in those. We're also starting to expand our uh, knowledge base into rigid polymers and into metals. So looking at thermal applications and doing more work within the federal government to kind of build that initial knowledge base that we ultimately transfer into our Frontier product. All right, I think we got this. This is a 3D printed geometric replacement for foam. The padding effect comes from this lattice structure, this 3D printed form. This is an example of a digital material, something that gets some of its material properties from its physical geometry. These pads were developed and designed for us by General Lattice, a company that specializes in manipulating material properties by altering the geometry. They're working on a database of multiple different types of lattices, multiple types of digital materials that can be applied in many use cases beyond just sports helmets. Thanks for watching. And now, as we promised at the start of the episode, we want to tell you about something new we're launching, the Cool Parts Show All Access. That's right. All Access is a free subscription for our fans. That's you. If you sign up at thecoolpartshow.com, you get access to behind-the-scenes footage, to exclusive interview clips with our experts, and you'll be able to watch all of our new episodes early before they premiere on YouTube. We do these episodes, and we routinely find that we have these interesting segments of, of things our interviewees have shared that we can't find a place to use in the show, and, and now we can put them in All Access. And share them that way. So for example, from this episode, there was this moment where Merrick talked about the way that the surface of this 3D printed padding, it doesn't end in just broken lattice forms. It comes to kind of a smooth closure. There are some design issues that, that go into that, that are wrapped up in that, and Merrick elaborates on that. So go to All Access Register and see him talk about that. And if you've been a fan of the show for a long time, there's some stuff up there already from previous episodes. There's things going all the way back to the creation of this thing called The Cool Part Show, and there's more to come. So sign up at thecoolpartshow.com, and we'll see you behind the scenes. Thank you for watching.
This episode is brought to you by Carpenter Additive. We're past the point of not knowing how to qualify metal 3D printed parts. We know it's just that different end users of those parts have different qualification requirements. Additive manufacturing service providers have to navigate that, and Carpenter Additive has to think about that in tailoring powder management solutions. Our customers typically will have, if they are a service provider, they will have a series of end user customers who may be, say, OEMs in the aerospace world. And each of them has a, has a fairly large team of engineers who've been doing this for decades or more and have developed all these standards, regulations, paperwork. So it is, a, it is certainly a challenge to uh, find, thread the needle between all of these different requirements. We start really high level, we walk on the shop floor, we ask them about, okay, source to sink, how do you bring in the materials, goods in, uh, you know, send that material to each of the, the systems, and then what we're really interested in is how do they reuse that material. So what we do is called a value stream map, Pretty often that leads to a series of things that were either overlooked or hadn't really boiled up to the surface yet in terms of things that are potential risks or potential challenges or inefficiencies that exist. A lot of the customers we work with, especially in the more regulated industries such as space or medical or aerospace, have already been through those early learning stages. They've put five plus years into this. They've done the product design and the, the design for man additive manufacturing. And now they're starting to reach some of the more finicky problems that you get when you're at the scale of maybe five, 10 machines. You're running different materials simultaneously. You're doing different programs. Right, we get to take the best from the medical field and the aerospace field. We understand the specifications and the, uh, the standards that exist in each of those fields. And we can sort of take the, the best elements of those and, and customize that to our customers.